Hi, my name is Marie Miao, Oncology Clinical Social Worker and Manager of the ART Program here at Ho Cancer Center. Our ART Program is designed to help you through your healing journey as a coping tool. We encourage you to take a deep breath and take a moment to be still with your mind and body to flow as one. So we encourage you to enjoy the process. This ART class is designed for any level and it is open to anyone to try and we would love to hear your feedback at the end. Hi, I'm Gail Wirtz Costello, co-founder of Artistic Healings. I'm excited to have you with us today. I've been an art therapist for over 40 years and worked in almost every discipline. This series is called Art for the Soul. Participants in the past have enjoyed this series, um, they say it relieves stress. There's no need to be an artist. We've had a lot of positive feedback on the ability to get away from your thoughts and feelings or to just take a break from everyday life. Today, I'd like to introduce you to the first of our series, a level one project called Landscape of Our Lives. In each of the videos, we're gonna teach you something about art techniques. And this one is about perspective. The colors that you use that are closer to you will be brighter. The ones in the background will be more neutral. The objects in the background will be smaller and the ones that are closer to you will be larger. And this will cr create a sense of perspective in your drawing. In your kit, you will have your tissue paper and there'll be pre-torn shapes. So they're free form. So the mountains look realistic to begin with but you can do anything you wanna do with the tissue paper. It doesn't have to be a landscape. Um, there's enough tissue paper in it for you to use your own imagination the way you'd like to. You don't have to follow our directions. Now, I would like to introduce you to Lynn Kaplan. She's gonna be our step-by-step -step instructor. I want you to feel free to follow her instruction or vary that any way you would like. Hi, I'm Lynn Kaplan, and I'm gonna be your instructor through this series. I got breast cancer when, oh my gosh, like 12 years ago. I was really lucky because I was able to catch it on time. My sister had it too, my mother's had it as well, and it's pretty much prevalent in my entire family. I understand what it feels like. When my sister got breast cancer, she was the first one. I clearly remember saying to her, Sue, I'm so sorry, I understand how you feel. And I was really wrong because until I got breast cancer, I didn't understand how she felt. So I do understand how you feel, but I also know that there is a path through this and that there is a happy light at the end of most of our tunnels. Art for me has been part of my journey and I found myself going more and more into visual arts. The amazing thing about visual arts and the projects that you're about, and I really hope that you do follow with us, is that they're not all predictable. It's not all planned. So for me, my life did not work out the way I intended. I did not intend to move, I did not intend to immigrate, and I did not intend to go through breast cancer. But having found my journey and my salvation to a large extent in art, I really found a new avenue for myself. One that when I start when I start to paint or to create something, I forget everything else around me and all I do is focus on what I'm working on. Approach everything you do on this series one step at a time. Don't try and problem solve the third step before we've actually faced the first step. And for today's first step, I just want you to focus on technique and go slowly with us. And I hope you enjoy the series and I look forward to working with you on all our adventures, creative adventures.
I think it would be really interesting if you almost closed your eyes for a minute and imagined a landscape. And where is your landscape? Is your landscape in the desert? Is your landscape over the ocean? Are you thinking about Catalina? So give yourself a moment to really think about what you want to achieve in your landscape. I just came from Joshua Tree. So are you in a Joshua Tree situation? Are you in something a lot calmer, which is more where I would be going? So I think if everybody got comfortable and found your canvases and we can begin. For today, we're gonna to take out our tissue paper, open your packs of tissue paper. We're gonna understand a palette, so the warm colors and the cool colors. And I always think of the warm colors as your sun. So your bright, sunny oranges, yellows, your vibrant colors. Your cool colors are the colors that are more earthy. So think about your burgundies, your greens, your blues, your deeper colors are, for, are your cooler colors. And the very next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start thinking about what we wanna create. Do we wanna create an ocean scene, a desert scene, a mountain scene? So we don't have a picture that we're looking at today. We're working from our imagination. The beauty about working from your imagination is there's no right or wrong, <laughs> well, which is true. So tell me about the beach. So all blues and white with yellow and then the ocean. And is there and sand? The sand? Yes, there's sand. And is there white water? Yes. And is there a wave? Yes. And is there a mountain or an island or something? No. no. If you were in paint, you'd be able to mix your colors, darken your colors, deepen your colors, and create your own colors. What you can do though in tissue paper art is you can overlay them. So if you use one piece of yellow, you're gonna get a yellow this dark. But if you start overlaying them, and you may have to even overlay them two or three times, you start getting a darker or deeper tone of yellow. So I would even recommend that you take your colors and you start overlaying them and see what happens to your yellows if you go over something um, and how it changes. So just what I've done now with pink and yellow is giving me a peachy color, which I never had before. So you have to be really creative in overlaying, blending, putting it on top, but no, we don't have every color you want. You gotta be a little bit flexible, mm -hmm. and it kind of teaches flexibility, because you're like, well, I can't really get exactly what I want, but let's see what we can do with what we have. Okay. You know, kind of a metaphor. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, as you will see in your packet, most of the shapes are pre-torn. You may want to tear um, some different shapes. So you can either do it this way, holding it and tearing it. And the other thing is if you want a straight line, you will put, use a straight edge, tear it this way. A lot of this project is using freeform shapes, mountains or rocks or lines. I like freeform tearing because it gives you more of a natural line. So if you do want to add a certain shape and you're not getting it with your tear, use your scissors and you can cut your shape here. I don't usually put objects right in the center. I put it to the right or to the left, just for composition. So we're gonna try our very best using the colors that we have to create what we wanna create. Once you've separated those colors, and I want you to just make a little bit of space wherever you are at home or over here, and I want you to put them into your blues and your greens, and let's see what colors we have. So you want to start off with your blues. So take your blues and let's have a look what blues you have. And let's kind of just on the paper without a canvas, without creating something, just start playing with what you have. And then once we've got that, we're going to figure out how we're going to transition into the other colors and what are we going to have as, as our transitional line. So you have far more tissue paper than you're going to need. So don't feel obliged that you have to pile it all on. Pick the pieces that you like. We can always put the pieces aside for another project, but you don't have to use them all today. 
Ashi, what are your thoughts and what are you creating? I want to do like a sunset, maybe. So I'll start with blues and then go to the oranges and the pinks and that color combination. So Tanya is um, an artist and she likes to work large, right Tanya? Very large. Yeah, knowing Tanya, I brought a, a larger uh, canvas and larger tissue paper, which people, if they chose to do that, can order those off the website. And how's, how's it feeling, even though it makes you nervous because you're, you're a painter? But it's fun. I'm it's different. Just very different, and mm -hmm. I just think of this as my paints. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will use a brush mm -hmm. to glue it together, so it's kind of similar uh -huh. in some ways. I think it, for, for me as an artist also, it's teaching me to see color flat instead of you know, putting a boat here and this here and this. I'm seeing flat surfaces of color in paint. Um, Candace, you've also, you, you've planned it out well. Now we're gonna have to take it off and we're gonna have to start again so that we really understand how to put tissue paper on. If we do not apply the glue correctly on the underneath and on top, the tissue paper will lift. There we go. So good job, Larry's got no wrinkles. Wrinkles are fabulous. Texture. <laughs> it's not only texture, but we all have wrinkles. So we're gonna go over how to apply your medium or your glue. You wanna take your brush and you wanna liberally dip it in. And you wanna apply your glue all over the area that you're gonna apply your tissue paper to. You wanna go a little bit further down I wouldn't do the whole canvas, I would work in sections, but I'm making sure the entire top section is covered. I am gonna apply a piece of tissue paper over one more time. I'm using the hard edge at the top of the canvas. I'll start on this side and I'm putting it on using my brush and gently making sure, holding it up. I, I actually recommend you hold it up on one edge and you work yourself into the end. And if you notice what I did, it's actually kind of a cool tip where you can actually use your brush to pick it up, putting it on, applying it on. I'm gonna put one more piece on just to show you how to apply the tissue paper with the glue on top. So you have glue underneath and you do need to have the glue on top as well, applying it liberally underneath and on top. Ashi, can you tell me a little bit about what you want to achieve in your picture? Um, I want it to be like a sunset. I want to have a sun, um, maybe some reflection from the sun in like hills or ground. Okay, so now we have to think about how we're going to get a sun. So don't feel limited by the materials you're getting in your packet. If you need to jump up and get a scissors or have a scissors handy, that's what I would recommend that we do. Fold it over in half mm -hmm. and I would cut a sun like okay. that. And think about cutting the half of a circle and then you've got that half a circle that's mm -hmm. actually a circle and that's a nice sun that you've got to tuck in. I like it, it's turning out good. <laughs> Have a look what Larry's doing. So Larry's doing a really good job and he's now not overthinking it, but he's applying layer after layer with a lot of glue and making sure I don't damage anything in the process. So you've gone really quickly and you've done a great job. You've got your sky, at, oh, I'm sorry, it's your okay. sky at the back and your pretty mountain. Then you've got your green grass and you're going down to your water. At the point of most people at this project, if you get to the stage where you've done your background and you've achieved that, it's almost at a point that if you choose not to go any further, you may stop until lesson number two. So this was Colleen's first one, which how was your first experience different than your second one? It was really, really different mm -hmm. because that's dry and it's desert sparse. But this one I wanted to have water and mountains and a lake. So do you think that it's you're in a different place 
the new work. Oh, oh yes. And yes, yes, yes. the difference using materials, you're more familiar with them, so it makes it easy. Yes. All of those things. But I think my headspace is so much different. The last time it was the day after your father's funeral. Correct. And so you did this and it was it was a difficult day. Yes. And you're so you're in a different headspace and it shows. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So tell me, at first you were very controlled about it and now what? And now it's given me the freedom to be spontaneous. Mm -hmm. So I had my life is always perfectly planned has to go point to plan, very controlled. And the minute that I was told that I could just choose a color, I went for this quite amazing color. But then I've also got the soothing piece, you know, because mm -hmm. I suffer from anxiety. And so this has been an amazing experience to be able to put the spontaneity in, but the calming as well. Mm -hmm. It's a new me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is my safe space, the ocean. And the art materials make you feel Free. Free. Mm -hmm. I have no restrictions on me whatsoever. I can do whatever I like and it's fine. So just having that freedom to be able to just express myself with, without confines and mm -hmm. rules mm -hmm. has been really amazing. And so what we don't want to do is we don't want to apply a huge piece of tissue paper at any one time. And we do want to make sure that we have enough glue everywhere. If we don't have enough glue, of course your tissue paper's got nothing to to grab onto. We're going through the layers and the lines and she's gone so far down in a dark deep blue tissue and I'm suggesting instead of having a monotone background to maybe have a look at different colors. There you go. Perfect. I think that it was more fun doing it the second time because I knew what to expect. So, because um, I'm not an artist but I I do enjoy a bit of a creative side, trying to let that out every once in a while through fabrics or sewing or something. I, I would encourage everyone to, to do it a second time at least because it's just enjoyable. It's fun, it's freeing, it's, there's no um, ugly place in your head when you're doing this, you're just, you're just having fun. Okay, now I want you to take your brush, Liz and gently apply your glue all over the whole of that piece. So you've got glue underneath and glue on top. You can also take this at this point and you can make sure all your edges are tucked in nicely. There we go. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna stick to the table. So you wanna make sure that this is not on one of your pretty tablecloths at home. There we go, perfect. All the way on, tucking it in. Take your corner, it's kinda like gift wrapping. Thank so you've you. actually done a really good job. <laughs> now, what I want to ask you is you have a little sailboat here and a wave. So let's try and recreate that sailboat and wave because we have all this tissue paper. And let's think about what we're going to do. My technique is not perfect. And I have some tears of the tissue paper. So as I went, I created some uh, other landscapes that I had in mind. First I had in mind just the beach. Now I have some wet sand, dry sand, and some streams coming through uh, the green possible grass. And that green grass I accomplished by putting some yellow on blue. It's a challenge, but I like it. And uh, as I go, I'm figuring out things and it's getting already better. If you are working in white tissue paper, you might find it does disappear. So you might have to have a base color. And I'm picking up the pink because even the pink would give us a buffer against the blue. So I've been talking to Ashima about some of her past experiences about having cancer when she was younger. And um, we've been talking about how important the support system was for you at the time. Yeah. So tell about that. So I had cancer like two years old, two and a half years old. I was so young, I don't have any strong memories, but my mom was actually pregnant with my brother at the time. So I remember like my grandparents always being there, my aunt and uncle and my cousins were there. So I think it was so important and so special that there was so much family around me and bringing me up and that was like my support system and Miss Lynn has also been a support system, support, someone who supported me since like 
age of three and I'm now 14. So she's been there for like 11 years and I'm so thankful for her and my family and everyone. Yeah, you can imagine what it's been like for people the last couple of years during COVID, you know? It's hard because when you can't really go out and you can't see your friends and all that, art is something you can do alone and it brings you such joy and such happiness and such a feeling of accomplishment, I guess. So it was a great way for me for 12 years and it's going to be, I bet for so many other people, art is also a very helpful way to relax and kind of just enjoy life more. So I have finished the ocean. It used to be a sky, but I realized it looks more like an ocean. So now I am trying to make some sand to go with my ocean. And I think I'm having a little bit of a hard time ripping the paper. This sheet is like a really tough paper. So I'm gonna find a way to make it less like broken down and more of like a solidified kind of structure. <laughs> I've never used the paper medium before, so I've created some holes. So I decided to do some streams in my beach scene. And um, the combination of blue and yellow paper gave me this green. So actually, I have some green grass, sand, wet sand, and some streams coming from the sea. Okay. And where do you intend going with this? What's in the middle? You have a purple sky. Purple sky, blue sea. Uh, I'm going to combine some other colors to make it more turquoise. So this is too pink now, so I will apply some orange and yellow to make it more coral. Okay, so right. going forward in the middle between the two yellow lines is water, right? Yes. I want you to not overthink it. Okay. I want you to tear your blues and I want you to apply your blues in strips okay. without overthinking it. And let's see what happens. Let's approach this first. Okay. What's coming here? Well, this is a piece I'm stuck on. Like, I'm kind of doing, going into the ocean, feeling that amazing feeling, and then you just keep going. All right, so pick up that pale, pale blue of tissue paper mm -hmm. and put that down. Just let's have a look what that achieves. But just remember, this is the first time you're doing this project. Mm -hmm. So I want you to problem solve without giving yourself too much of a hard time. Okay. Okay, great. This is such a good lesson for me. I almost think we have enough in our lives that are really difficult to approach. Mm -hmm. And when we do our art, we should go with the flow, not try to overthink things too much. Tell us a little bit about what you've achieved and how did you find the approach of not overthinking it or not being in control of it. Um, the material does not allow you to be in total control. The end result it remains to be seen. Ashy, on the other hand, has achieved everything she should have achieved. But it looks boring. It's not boring at my all. My sand area and my reflections, I don't know what happened. Okay, I think it's actually beautiful. There you go. When we left Liz last time, she was trying to create something using a clear, transparent tissue paper over a blue background, and we just couldn't get it to show. So what we ended up doing and how we solved it is took a little bit of pink, and we used the pink as a buffer between the blue and the white. So we used the off-white over the pink, and what she's got is a really cool boat. So thank the, you very much. Well, thank you very much because it was your idea. And I'm very proud of you for doing it. So Liz just lost her husband. And what we're doing is we're discussing what we could do, even although it is taking the, pain, the, the project into a little bit more complicated, advanced stage. But we're trying to think how we could put something in this picture that symbolized her husband. So Liz has one last little challenge. She needed a little bit of black and there was no black in her packet. So if you're finding that you need a color or you need something, this is a really great time to be inventive. And we actually found a plastic tablecloth, which I cut just a teeny tiny little piece off. And thanks to Liz's great imagination, we've come up with something that could look like a fishing pole. I think that's a great solution. All right. All right, it's a great touch. 
And that's your two finished pieces. I thank you very much. I for thank being you listening. very much. Art, you I you are great. Very much. A great student. <laughs> thank you. You're a great teacher. Oh. You're 89. Is that okay, Clay? Sure. You're 80. She's 89. Years young. It's been a delight having you. And Gail, my goodness, presenting tissue paper <laughs> and <the> ace. <laughs> I could believe it. I mean, what are you going to do with this stuff on a canvas? So, Gail really uh, gave me an entirely new and bright outlook on life. I hope you enjoyed creating with us today, and I look forward to seeing everything that you create on your journey with us. And thank you.